All right, let's take a look at the examples for perpendicular lines. The example A asks, which of the following is the best example of perpendicular lines? So the first example is latitude lines on a globe. Now on a globe, sort of circular here, the latitude lines run across the globe, like so. So those would be a great example of parallel lines, but not such a good example of perpendicular lines, so it can't be that one. Uh, opposite sides of a picture frame. So if we have a picture frame, like so, could even you know be all cool and make it two layers. How nice am I? Um, then the opposite sides of picture frame might be this side here, and this side here, or this side and this side. But in either case, we got another example of parallel lines, not perpendicular lines. Fence posts. Vertical, a bunch of vertical lines going across, do, 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 like so. They're all parallel lines, not perpendicular lines. Uh, finally, adjacent sides of a picture frame. So our adjacent sides, let's do that in red. The adjacent sides of a picture frame are the sides that touch each other. So that would be maybe this side here and this side here. Now those two lines are definitely perpendicular. They're going to meet, hopefully, assuming you know it's a good picture frame, they're going to meet at a 90 degree angle right here. So definitely answer four, adjacent sides of a picture frame. Okay, example B says, is line SO perpendicular to line GD? So is the line running from here, well, through there and through here, perpendicular to the line running from here through here? D down here. Um, well, we know that this angle so angle SGD is equivalent to OGD because they're marked that way. So we know that um, then GD is the bisector for angle OS. So if we take a look at angle OS from here to here or from here all the way around to here, OS are a linear pair. OS make up a linear pair. And if they're a linear pair, then they equal 180 degrees. So if GD bisects 180 degrees, then GD then between OGD and SGD, we're looking at 90 degrees on each side. So are they perpendicular? Yes, absolutely, because they meet at 90 degree angles right here. Absolutely. All right, example C asks us to write a two column proof to prove theorem number one. Theorem number one says that if two lines are parallel, say lines L and M over here, then if one of those lines is perpendicular to a third line, say L is perpendicular to N, then the other line, in this case M, is also perpendicular to the third line. And we need to prove that. So let's start with our givens. We know that L is parallel to M. So L is parallel to M. That's a given. And we also know that L is perpendicular to N. That's another given. And we know that um, angles 1, 2, 3, and 4, right here, 1, 2, 3 and 4 are all right angles. Angles 1 through 4 are 90 degrees, equal 90 degrees, because they're perpendicular lines, L and N, so it's based on the definition of a per perpendicular line, we know those are 90 degrees. Definition of perpendiculars. Whoa. Perpendicular. Okay, and then we also know that angle 1 is equal to angle 5 because angles 1 and 5 are corresponding. Now, corresponding angles are angles that are in the same position on different but equal angle sets. So the top left hand angle here, 1, is going to be equal to the top left hand angle here. If these lines are parallel and they're crossed by a transversal, and these are all true statements here, then corresponding angles are equal. 
So angle 1 is equal to angle 5 based on corresponding angles. And then if angle 5 is equal to angle 1, then angle 5 is also 90 degrees. We know that because we know it's equal to 1. Um, we'll call that uh, transitive. Transitive property of equality. And then finally, if 5 is 90 degrees, then 6 and 7 are both 90 degrees because 5, 6, and 5, 7 are linear pairs. So angle 6 and angle 7 are 90 degrees. 90 degrees because they're linear pairs. And if 5, 6, and 7 are 90 degrees, um, then we have our definition again of perpendicular lines. And we're done. Definition of perpendiculars. Showing that N is perpendicular to M. And we got it.